here. Now, tonight, bombshell new evidence in the Joe Biden bribery scandal allegations. Uh, and tonight, we have receipts. Now, the House Oversight and Accountability Committee just released these. Another bank memo. It details payments to the Bidens, let's see, from Russia, Kazakhstan, uh, Romania, Ukraine, and China. Most of those countries really love us, don't they? They made a fortune. Uh, beyond $20 million they were able to trace. Chairman Comer will join us in a few minutes and talk about it. And JustTheNews.com's John Solomon will be here to break it all down. But let me sum this up for you, and this is serious. This is massive sums of money. And Hunter Biden, at the height of his crack addiction and prostitute addiction, was raking in millions and millions of dollars from corrupt foreign nationals. Now, these are, in many cases, corrupt foreign countries and our number one, number two geopolitical foe, Russia and China, or the opposite, China and Russia, and then facilitating meetings and phone calls and other favors between these corrupt foreign nationals and then Vice President of the United States of America, Joe Biden. In other words, that was Hunter's job. Connect them to Joe, the big guy, the guy who he's given half his income to, Pops. Anyway, Hunter at the time was an admitted crack addict, and now it begs the question, what did Hunter, the crack addict, personally do or even have to offer these countries for what is now tens of millions of dollars? Well, what was he giving them? What work did he perform? Or the grandchildren that they've traced money to, what did they do for the money that was funneled to them through these uh, shell corporations or, quote, LLCs that had no businesses in them? Now, Hunter admitted he himself had no experience in energy at all and no business with experience with countries that were paying him all these millions. Um, you know, so what were the countries paying him millions of dollars for? What did he do for that money? Now, Joe's proclamation, both as candidate Joe Biden and now President Joe Biden, he said over and over and over again that he never once discussed foreign business dealings with Hunter, his brother, or, quote, Anyone else, for that matter, that has now been proven to be a massive lie. We know through text messages. We know through emails. We have photographic evidence. We have eyewitness accounts. And now we have tonight bank records. But according to Joe Biden, none of this ever happened. And today, again, our own Peter Ducey asked very important questions. He vehemently denies yet again ever talking business with Hunter. But yet he's meeting with Hunter and Russian and, and Kazakhstan oligarchs and all these rich people from all these countries that don't particularly like us. And then, by the way, he exploded at our very own Peter Ducey. Peter deserves a raise for this, for daring to ask this question. There's this testimony now where one of your son's former business associates is claiming that you were on speakerphone a lot with them, talking business. Is that what? I never talk business in anybody. And I, I know you'd have a lousy question. Well, what do you, it's, why is that a lousy question? Because it's not true. Well, that's what Devin Archer said. That would be Hunter's business partner. That would be the guy that you sent a note to, personally, you know, handwritten with a little note at the bottom of it. Our very own Peter Ducey is going to join us in a minute. He'll respond, tell us what was going on behind the scenes. Great question. So Joe Biden is flat out lying, a lie that he repeats with regularity. As president, here's Joe every time he was president lying to you. How involved were you in your son's Chinese shakedown text message? Were you sitting there? It's were you involved? No, were you involved? I wasn't. I don't know. Were you? No. Why about never speaking to Hunter about the No. If the only thing they can do is make up things about my family, it's not going to go very far. Oh, it's going far. Anyway, <laughs> a liar repeated over and over again during the 2020 campaign. He continues the big lie while continuing, sadly, to yell at my friend and colleague, Peter Ducey, and other reporters. Take a look. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. And what I will do is the same thing we did in our administration. There will be an absolute wall between personal and private 
uh, and, and, and the government. Do you stand by your statement that you did not discuss any of your son's overseas business yes, dealings? Yes, I stand by that statement. Now, only in the last two and a half weeks did that evolve into, I never was in business with Hunter. Oh, a very different scenario. Ask yourself, uh, well, what do you trust more, a career politician like Joe Biden, a serial plagiarizer, a habitual liar, uh, or hard evidence in the form of photographs, text messages, and now bank records? Because tonight, we now have access to some of the most compelling evidence to date. A new report from the House Committee on Oversight and Accountability has now identified, quote, over $20 million in payments from foreign sources to the Biden family and their business associates. For the Democrats who believe this is all some kind of illusion, well, here are the bank records. Take a look on your screen right there. This shows a $3.5 million wire from the former First Lady of Moscow, a Russian oligarch that went right into an account owned by Hunter Biden and Devin Archer. And by the way, a short time later, and she also invested, what, $120 million in real estate, Joe Biden, then Vice President of the United States, after the $3.5 million wire, had dinner with the Russian oligarch. Elena Baterainer is her name, in Cafe Milano, in beautiful Washington, D.C., uh, just as bad a sewer as New York City. And also last week, Devin Archer, he confirmed the same Russian oligarch did indeed invest $120 million in Hunter's real estate fund. Okay, meanwhile, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, this particular Russian oligarch, Elena Baterina, received no sanctions from the Biden administration. I guess just a lucky coincidence? I don't know. Now, in 2014 and 2015, then Vice President Biden also allegedly attended dinners with his son's Kazakh business partners. Oddly enough, in April of 2014, one of those Kazakhstan business partners wired a whopping $142,300 into one of Hunter Biden's accounts. By the way, a mere coincidence, I'm sure. The exact price of a brand new Porsche sports car that Hunter purchased. I'm sure it was accidental, that figure. Now, what did Hunter, at the time an admitted crack addict, do to earn that money? What did all of these countries expect for the millions and millions and millions of dollars we now know that the Bidens were paid? Now, why did Joe Biden lie over and over again and say he never, ever discussed any of these matters? And yet, Devin Archer says over 20 times that he can recall, he called into meetings with with these foreign business associates. Anyway, now we have bank records showing millions of dollars in payments from the Ukrainian oligarch, you know, the guy that owns Burisma Holdings. Once again, Hunter facilitated discussions between Burisma execs and D.C., and a short time later, Joe forced out the prosecutor that was investigating Burisma Oil, the oil and gas giant in Ukraine, uh, and his own son for corruption. They were being investigated. This after Burisma was begging Hunter, please, we need D.C. help on the issue, on this issue and others. Well, help came when Joe Biden gave the prosecutor or the government leverage the billion of your tax dollars and gave them six hours to fire the prosecutor. And son of a bee, they fired that prosecutor. And Hunter continued to get paid money of which he admitted he had no experience on Good Morning America. And by the way, the prosecutor, Hunter, who was described on the 1023 form by the Burisma executive, they thought Hunter was dumb and stupid. The guy actually said he thought his dog was smarter than Hunter. <laughs> so, not making it up. This is all one big coincidence, I'm sure. And they were just looking for a crackhead that they just felt like they're giving millions of dollars to, and it wasn't just one country, it was numerous countries. Or, as the committee reports, quote, President Biden's family is the vehicle to receive bribery payments. The report continues, indeed, the law recognizes that payments to, payments to family members to corruptly influence others can constitute a bribe. So keep in mind who the Bidens were conducting business with. We're not talking about deals with the Royal Bank of Canada or Switzerland or Japan. Instead, Hunter's raking in money from a Russian oligarch. 
uh, from Moscow, another oligarch from Ukraine, a Romanian businessman convicted of bribery, a Chinese partner suspected of economic crimes and bribery, and a Kazakh politician convicted of treason. And according to emails and texts from Hunter's laptop, Hunter was forced to hand over 50% of his salary to Pops. He hated it, had to pay for all of Pops' home repairs, and he bitched about that. And another email listed a 10% stake in one deal for the big guy. Tony Bobulinski said the big guy was Joe Biden. Everybody knew it. Never mind the credible FBI source in the 1023 form accusing Joe Biden of accepting a $5 million bribe from Burisma execs, and it will take us 10 years to find out how they paid him. Now, we're just supposed to act like this is all business as usual, all while Joe Biden lies to our faces, and we have all this evidence? If there are any Democrats left in Washington with any integrity, they need to speak out. This is not business as usual. In fact, it reeks of nothing but corruption. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.